Well, good day, everybody. I'm back and uh, happy to be here. Thanks, Lutz, for uh, holding the fort for the last couple of days. And uh, it's now the 14th of January already, halfway through the month nearly. And uh, 7 o'clock here in Tassie and uh, 9 o'clock in La Sable de Lone, which is apparently very cold, rainy and all those sorts of horrible things because Ada's about to get on the plane and head back to France. And here it's been a beautiful day in Tassie. She's been on the beach all day. Anyway, so uh, she'll be really excited to be back under that weather. Um, okay, so what's happening here? A few things. Uh, Simon's still sailing away in a hurry. And uh, Abolish and uh, Kirsten are having a bit of fun there. I don't think Kirsten's too happy at the moment. Googs be calm just off the uh, Snares Island. And uh, Jeremy uh, is... Nearly uh, out of the doldrums there with no wind. He's got some wind, but it's headwinds, and uh, Ian's been roaring up behind him, so that's kind of cool. Elliot's making his way up to uh, uh, Perth slowly, but he's now facing the wrong way because he's got no wind, and Guy continues to sail below the line. And uh, he's going to be in Chichester class, or he's already in Chichester class, I mean, so we can't penalise him, and it's up to him. He knows what he's doing. He's 30 miles under the line, so... It's not so dramatic, but we will probably send him a note and say, oh, it's not really in the spirit of the GGR to be in that zone. Um, anyway, so let's start off the back of the fleet here and see what's happening to uh, to the two guys here, uh, Elliot and I think I can go that way. Here we go, yeah, just about there. I'll get rid of this so we can see more, although then you can't see uh, can't see Australia in the point of reference. Okay. So Guy's currently uh, got some medium winds and his speed, here we go, uh, 5.9 knots. Uh, that's the 8 o'clock position, so that's not a bad average. He's got a little high pressure here. You can just see underneath the, uh, the no-go zone that's uh, creating favourable winds for him. So we'll see how that moves in a minute to uh, see what's going. I'm not sure. Well, I think Guy just, uh, it's probably a psychological thing. He wants to get down south to try and find some stronger breezes and uh, he wants to keep sailing so he thinks uh, it's faster the further south he goes uh, he knows exactly where he is uh, he's got very clear sky if we uh, look at the clouds all around guy at the moment you can see there no clouds at all in the middle it's a meridian passage simplest uh, sight of all to do you don't even need now now when act really or you don't do have to get you know you do but yeah you, you uh, just do very simple calculations and quickly get a uh, an east-west position line on the latitude, on the designated latitude. So he knows he's about half a degree down and uh, should probably be up a bit. But that's it. It's, uh, as I say, he's Chichester, so uh, not a big deal. And he probably knows he'll be out soon anyway. In fact, I'm sure he does. Uh, okay, back to the wind. In fact, it's an interesting scenario now because uh, by the end of the month, he's going to be down here under Cape Lewin somewhere. It's a couple of thousand miles away, and he's only about 1,200 miles from Hobart. So had he have, you know, you can look back and in retrospect, there's all sorts of things like that that you can ponder. But remember, he was going to take off to uh, go down to, to Puntal Est in Uruguay. Had he have kept going, then he may have got to Cape Town earlier, may have got the bugs off and, and, and could have possibly made the gate. But anyway, that's life. You make your decisions and stick with it. And he was very happy. He's been doing a great job. The boat's moving fast now. Uh, so uh, he's having a great sail anyway. And then uh, Elliot, you can see here he's facing the wrong way. He's facing southwest. He's doing 0.3 of a knot. And he's been sitting there for a while, and so he's going nowhere, but he's not very far away. Before I do the distance, we'll just follow this weather through and just see what's going to happen, because there's a, a massive amount here of nothing, and uh, that's all going to do some dances on shore. Uh, so we'll hit that and just toggle it through. Uh, I'll get rid of that so you can see it a bit better. Um, we'll just toggle it through. Now it's not moving because I hit that to get rid of the thingos now it's going so that ridge of or that center that's squashing through it's still holding right over the top of um, Elliot the center that was behind guy the center of this little high if you can call it that because it's loosening up into this whole area of a uh, very low pressure gradient is going to move over the top of guy so he's going to slow down a bit this is coming into uh, the next 12 hours and uh, then uh, okay so Elliot will be underway he'll be underway by uh, this time tomorrow okay so 24 hours he'll be underway again and the same with Guy he's going to have about 12 hour delay uh, and then Guy's got a northerly uh, which will which will push him along fine and then behind that northerly he's got uh, another um, another batch of northwesterlies 
that'll turn into a front as well. It looks like there's plenty of consistent breeze there and Elliot will ride it through as well. So this is now 24 hours, uh, 48 hours into the uh, 16th, okay? And so it, both are moving pretty well. Uh, yeah, Elliot will ride most of that all the way up and Guy's still got breeze right through until the 17th. So we're, that's, 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 he's, oh, well, it gets a bit loose. So for the next three days, uh, Guy's got two and a half days of, of good sailing. And there's about a half a day of nothing. And Elliot's pretty much on a roll. So let's just see how far he is from uh, Fremantle. And that'll give us a rough ETA. There's still a fair way to go, but it's not so bad. Okay, 360 and he's got three days. He may uh, be getting in in about three or four days. So uh, it's Saturday here in Australia. So that's Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. So sometime, I'd say Wednesday morning maybe. Wednesday morning, uh, certainly no later than Thursday. We might see Elliot uh, make landfall now. I've got to try and get someone in there to uh, uh, do some... We, we're not going over there, obviously. We can't, logistically, it's, it's too challenging for us to get over to Western Australia. Uh, and uh, he's going to be there for some time. So we'll uh, see if we can get someone to do a... A uh, interview with him when he's coming in. I know Pip is over there, and there's a few others helping him out. So we'll we'll uh, see if we can get a get a camera there and get a recording, and and we'll get Elliot's story. It'll be good to see him. So uh, that's the plan there. Okay, we can leave that now. I'll get rid of this, get rid of that, and we'll start looking at Jeremy and Ian. Okay, so they got both got a bit of fun coming up right now. So we'll just load this up so you can see what's happening uh, certainly Ian's been sailing well and he's had consistent breezes really all the way through so he's hammered down on Jeremy and Jeremy's being bogged down with his uh, barnacles lack of water and and some other issues as well so he is absolutely um, going to stop here in Hobart and confirm that on the sat phone because we've had to uh, notify customs quarantine immigration so they're on the roll now and uh, the plan will be when he uh, arrives uh, he'll cross the line into the film gate, which means he's beat the timeline, of course, so then he can spend as long as he likes here and then take off. But uh, generally what he's got to do is uh, he's got no motor at the moment, so once he crosses the line, we then have to uh, uh, tow him up to the uh, Royal Yacht Club of um, uh, uh, Royal Yacht Club of Tasmania, YCT, and our host, um, and then um, we'll look at uh, slipping there. And He's got copper coat, which is interesting in itself, uh, because he's now got barnacles that are worse than what he had in Cape Town. And um, uh, so he doesn't have to paint the bottom. He's just got to remove the the barnacles. There's a very serious quarantine issues here in, in Hobart, in Tasmania, uh, January, because we're an island and they don't want invasive species. But I'm pretty confident the one that's on the boat will be... Uh, uh, will be a common ocean uh, barnacle type thing and that's what happened in the last race we had an investigation on that and it was considered to be a common one that's already in Tasmania nonetheless the club has an area for, for bio clean for capturing what comes off the boat uh, you know it's, the, it's a clean slip versus the normal slip so clean slip like quarantine so uh, anyway we, we, we're already talking to uh, the authorities here in uh, Hobart so you've got to slip the boat, clean the bottom, get some water, uh, get some more food and uh, say good day to his sisters that are here and uh, then get going. Uh, when we go out, I didn't know whether I was going to be here. It's a bit of a long story. So we had Jason on standby in case I couldn't make it to go and help Jane and now I'm here so Jason's still going to come out. So Jason will give us a hand with all the towing and stuff. We'll get the rib from the club hopefully on Monday morning or thereabouts and uh, we look forward to seeing Jeremy when he gets here. Um, so that's a quick update on that one. And uh, now what's going on? So first of all, just this is uh, Ian's going to be very happy here. He's, he's actually doing an Istvan Kopa from 2018, you know. <laughs> so he's 120-odd miles behind Jeremy if we put it on the equivalent rum line, um, or maybe less than that, 112. Um, so uh, that's interesting. And Jeremy's now, uh, you know, he doesn't go fast anyway because of the barnacles. And uh, if we, uh, I might just kick that up one more so we can get a good look at what's happening here. So I can get rid of the distance there. And uh, you can see here, Jeremy's got a headwind starting up now. He came over to the southeast. He's already got a forecast. There's a bit of a blow coming. So uh, let's send him a, a weather uh, alert uh, yesterday of this front coming through. So, so this is the, the strong um, 
north northeasterly that's currently blowing and if we toggle it through you can see what's going first of all their speed right now okay he's doing six uh, no hang on he's still averaged two knots so it hasn't hit him yet the last four hours it hasn't hit him he hasn't started but it's going to start very soon uh, Ian's doing 4.7 and uh, he'll be liking that so uh, don't look at the 24-hour uh, daily runs at the moment they're all screwed up they're virtually everyone in the fleet screwed up and I'm not sure why and YB are obviously they're aware of what's going on and they're on to it every now and then uh, so we'll carry on regardless the plotting is always correct so um, we uh, sorry about the glitches but that's uh, uh, something that everyone's working on so uh, we now uh, will just click the distances once again for Jeremy where to how far out he is so if we go to here there's uh, 82 miles hang on so he's about 85 miles uh, to that little um, turn point to a degree we use that as a benchmark and then he's got another 32 so 33 so uh, near enough zigzag 120 miles so at five knots direct course on the rum line to hobart he's still going to be 24 hours from pretty much now uh, because he's going to start with, with this sort of routine and he's not going to do that he's not going to go anywhere um, he's going to tack there a while i'll toggle this through and you can see the timeline that's happening so so here we go now no it's not toggling i forget i've got to press the button there and um, here we go so this will be uh, you can see it's gone quiet again so he hasn't had to put up with the with the um, hasn't had to put up with the um, uh, northerly too much you know that just sort of kicked in a bit in fact it didn't extend across as much as we thought so this is eight hours from now it's seven o'clock here so well let's say if we just go five hours and it's going to reach him so if i come back here five hours he'll start sailing okay but it's coming from the northwest so he'll go on the rum line and uh, then he's now got uh, a good good speed he's got plenty of wind it's going to be uh, it's about 30 knots when that comes through for jeremy uh, which means it'll gust to 45 and he should be able to make the rum line uh, and still make about five knots so we're thinking by the time we go through 24 hours from now he will be uh, here's 24 hours it starts to settle down a bit there's about 24 hours from now so he'll be somewhere up around here by seven o'clock tomorrow you know he'll he'll won't be going too fast because of the barnacles but also because of the heavy weather the sea's going to build up to you know three and a half meters maybe possibly even a bit more four meters uh and uh, he'll be going in uh, he won't get in by tomorrow night in the dark in the light so he's going to be quite challenged coming through here we're expecting him sometime on monday morning but we'll update that again tomorrow as it goes through so by the time all this happens that 120 mile difference between um, uh, ian and uh, uh, jeremy will probably close to about 70 miles you know maybe 70 80 miles he'll, he'll pick up quite a bit in the scheme of things so what will happen then is jeremy will uh, it'll be a day of if he comes in Monday sometimes it, the paperwork should be done by Monday it'll be slip Tuesday uh, Wednesday he might not be out of here until Wednesday night Thursday so uh, he's going to be two or three days behind Ian assuming Ian comes in and uh, stops for the usual 90 minutes or so and then takes off again he's going to get a jump and uh, all of a sudden with Jeremy into Chichester, it means that uh, Ian Herbert Jones will be sitting in fifth position in the GGR, which is nearly exactly what happened with uh, Istvan Kopar in the last edition. You know, up in the uh, around the Canaries and Cape Verdes, he was had all sorts of issues and was coming right at the end of the fleet. But he was there at the end of the day, and uh, he ended up finishing fourth in the rankings which was quite an incredible story and, and i see something similar happening here with ian all depressed at the beginning you may remember he says oh you know jeepers i don't know this is really embarrassing and blah blah, blah. and i was saying to him then ian it's a long way to the finish and even for the the five remaining boats you know it's still a long way from the finish so anything can happen anyway a lot going on here and we'll update positions again uh, for jeremy tomorrow uh, i'll do the question and answers as well tomorrow for those that are waiting for that okay so let's go and look at uh, Googs uh, having a nice little sail now he's he's uh, doing 1.6 knots <laughs> so um, that's uh, very slow going he has missed uh, the bounties if i push that up a little bit more i'm just gonna boom. 
uh, push that up a bit more, you can see uh, he got clear skies, as Lutz pointed out yesterday, uh, so he knows where he is. He's got around it okay, and now he's just got to try and kick... Oh, hang on. That's why I didn't put the wind back. We were looking yesterday. That's why he's going so slow. Uh, 1.6 knots, yeah. And he didn't do 270, 76 nautical miles in the last 24 hours. Okay, so uh, uh, anyway, we... Um, we would expect this to, I don't think, I think I'll just concentrate on Gug here for 24 hours. We'll just push this through uh, there. That's 24 hours from now. He's sailing again. He's got a nice breeze. And uh, who knows how long that might hold. If we go back a little bit here, just to show what's happening around the island, that big wind that was coming across from, uh, from Australia is going to start to impact uh, Goog as well. He's got some nice breeze to push him around the corner. That's going to be 30 knots, you know, gusting 40. Uh, and that's exactly where he want to go. And that'll, he'll pretty much follow that through for a little bit. Yeah, he's got to, uh, we can see that here's the Bounty Islands there. That's going to be quite nice. So this is on the 16th. So two days, uh, two full days ahead, he's still got a good breeze. And uh, yeah, he's going to get a good push through there, which is quite cool. So this is now, that's still the 16th, we're into the 17th, a little bit softening off, but not too bad. He's still sort of in the wind zone here, so he's still got a breeze to go. So that's uh, looking good. So that's through till the 17th, so three full days ahead, and I think um, Gug's on underway again, so that's pretty cool. So we'll come back here. Bernard Batessia is just about to hit the no-go zone. Uh, he's coming through this way, he's just going to make it over the top. That's good. And this is where it gets really interesting now because um, I know Kirsten's not so happy at the moment because, uh, hang on, I've got to go back one here so we can see Simon. Um, okay, so big southwesterly airflow here in terms of big area, not big winds. These winds are probably 20, 25 knots and probably a three meter C, uh, two to three meter C. And Simon, way up the front, he's doing four knots at the moment, but he's got a pretty light breeze, so that's understandable. Uh, Abolish is doing 6.4 knots, and Kirsten's doing 5.1 knots. Kirsten's consistently slower than Abolish at the moment, and um, it, it's interesting. I'm always fascinated by the courses they take when they've got similar wind direction. Abolish is holding true to the rum line, you know, heading exactly due west, and uh, Kirsten sometimes is a bit hard to pick on presuming things here but she's a little bit down down on the on the course she could come down maybe because if we just check the sea state um, let's see what we've got waves here yeah that's probably about three to four meters uh, abolish has got a little bit less if this is true remembering it's hard to be totally accurate so um, anyway that's that's uh, part of the course and they um, we'll come back to the wind so, but I, these could be ideals for co conditions for Abolish's secret weapon, which he will be using in these sort of wind ranges and this sort of wind direction as well. Because, uh, you know, we always think, well, you know, I mean, I've commented often about how I think Kirsten's boat should be faster than Abolish in, in some of this stuff. I thought so, but now it's proving a little bit different. So who knows? Anyway, the, the split, let's see what it looks like right now. We've got... Uh, oh, one, one there. Okay, so wow, I can see a rum. Uh, okay, so we're 960 miles uh, gap with uh, with Abolish, and if I bring this under the centers here, uh, Abolish has got a break of oh, it's only 70 miles. It's deceptive. That's nothing. That's absolutely nothing. That could change in in so many ways. So that's all pretty good. They're both still in the hunt, obviously, and it's a long way to the finish. So. Uh, we've still got a real boat race on, but soon we'll only have five left in the rankings and uh, we'll have uh, one Chichester continuing on. The uh, guy won't make the gate, obviously, so uh, that'll change a few things, but they're all looking good. They're, it's all an amazing story. And let's look at the weather now going forward for these guys. Uh, okay, boom. Okay, so, oh, hang on, I'm going to pull it back a bit. I always like to see the systems rather than just the 
the wind uh, on the spot, you can see what's developing. So this this is this whole area of instability back here, but it's the part of a high pressure, okay? And here it's just a bit of a mess. There's nothing, it's in between systems actually. You can see there's one big one that's still a mess over here somewhere. And uh, uh, you know, this, this is just a bit of a squashed something. I don't know what you'd call that. Uh, so let's just hold that there and I'll hit that one and then toggle it through. So this is, uh, okay, Simon's going to get a little bit more breeze, but still not a lot happening until around about midnight tonight, so another eight hours or so. And Abolish and Kirsten just in the breeze, but Kirsten's going to go a bit lighter than Abolish as this, this scent is starting to move over the top. So she won't like that. Uh, Abolish is going to hold that breeze. And now because it's going up into the northeast, uh, yeah, Kirsten's going to miss out there about... Uh, because that, that's quite a while. That, that, she's probably going to lose 20 miles there uh, because she would have been affected by about 10 hours with less wind than Abolish. But Abolish is still holding it. Simon's got heaps of breeze. He'll be back up to sevens and stuff. A solid southwesterly breeze. So this is into the 16th. So it's actually two days, uh, two days from um, uh, the, uh, uh, two days with, the, with those breezes. So that all looks pretty good. Anyway. I think the, everyone's got the picture there. Google's going to have Breeze, uh, Abolish and, and Kirsten. Boy, they've got to ride that line down there because this is the centre of the big high. Okay, and look at what Simon's got. He's going to be roaring away. <laughs> so, oh, jeepers.